Dodge City could be a very dangerous place for lawmen. On April 9, 1878, City Marshal Ed Masterson was shot and killed by drunk cowboy Jack Wagner. On July 13, 1878, Deputy U.S. Marshal Harry T. McCarty was shot and killed in the Long Branch Saloon by Thomas Roach. And on July 21, 1884, Assistant Marshal Thomas Nixon was shot and killed by Mysterious Dave Mather, the Deputy Sheriff of Ford County. The citizens of Dodge City mourned their fallen officers and were grateful for their sacrifice. The lawmen who survived Dodge City still had many close calls in which they could have easily wound up dead. While in Dodge City, Bat Masterson had two assassination attempts on his life, once as an officer and once again years later as a civilian. The first attempt was an ambush. In May of 1879, Bat Masterson was sheriff of Ford County, and his friend Wyatt Earp was assistant marshal of Dodge City. On Monday evening of May the 5th, three men from Missouri were in Dodge City, doing what many visitors did in Dodge, drinking large amounts of alcohol. The three men, under the influence of bad whiskey, decided to take the town. Wyatt Earp arrived on the scene and attempted to disarm one of the men and lead him off to jail by the ear. The other two Missourians stood by. One of them convinced the other to pull his gun and throw lead at Wyatt. Thankfully, Bat Masterson arrived on the scene just in time to hit the would-be killer over the head with his revolver. The three men were disarmed and taken to the jail. The following day, they were released. Instead of sobering up and deciding to resume their journey to Leadville, Colorado, the trio decided they would enact revenge on Bat Masterson. On Tuesday evening of May 6, the three men gathered in the back of a store building. They would send word for Sheriff Masterson and then ambush him. They chose an African-American boy to send word to Bat Masterson that somebody wanted to see him at the store where they were hiding. The boy knew something was off and gave warning to Bat. With help from Deputy Sheriff William Duffy, the ambush was foiled and the men arrested. The Dodge City Times newspaper published the story on May the 10th under the title Unruly Missourians. The article ended by saying, These fellows remarked that they had run things in Missouri and believed they could take Dodge City, but admitted that they were no match for Dodge City officers. Dodge City is hard to take. The pistol brigands find in it a warm berth. If Bat Masterson had not been warned by the boy, then that may have been the end for him. Three armed men with murder on their minds waiting to ambush a single person were not good odds, even for Bat Masterson. On November 4th, 1879, Bat Masterson was defeated in the election for sheriff by George Hinkle. This would not be the end of Bat's career in law enforcement or the end of his involvement with Dodge City. On April 16, 1881, Bat Masterson arrived in Dodge City to aid his brother James. Almost immediately after Bat left the train, he was involved in a gunfight with A.J. Peacock and Al Updegraff, the men James was having trouble with. The gunfights became known as the Battle of the Plaza and ended with Updegraff being wounded in the chest. Afterwards, Bat learned that his brother was alive and healthy. He was fined $8 for discharging a pistol in the city and left on the evening train with his brother. It was after the Battle of the Plaza that Bat Masterson's reputation became nationally known. Bill Young, a correspondent for the New York Sun, was in Gunnison, Colorado in August of 1881 looking for stories about gunfighters in the Wild West. Dr. Cockerell, a Gunnison local, fed Young a fantastic tall tale about Bat Masterson, saying that he killed 26 men and was only 26 years old. In the largely fictional article that appeared in the New York Sun, Bat became the man who shoots and smiles. 
This article was widely discussed by several Western newspapers, which led to a reporter from the Kansas City Journal to interview Bat himself. All of this catapulted Bat's reputation to great heights. While Masterson's name was becoming widely known, he became the city marshal of Trinidad, Colorado in 1882, and would stay in that position for a year. In 1883, Bat Masterson would be back in Dodge City to help his friend Luke Short during the much-publicized Dodge City War. Dodge City, 1884 Bat Masterson was no longer in law enforcement in Dodge City, but that didn't mean he had no enemies. Not only was Bat very involved in the local politics of Dodge City, he was now somewhat famous. These two factors may have been behind the second assassination attempt on Bat's life in Dodge City in September of 1884. The attack was covered by the Kansas Cowboy newspaper. A little melee. Quite a little unpleasantness occurred in a saloon in the city. We could not learn the cause of it, nor that there was any cause. There was a trial, however, and that developed the fact that one Mr. A.J. Howard, who is a cook in a restaurant, determined to make mincemeat of Mr. Bat Masterson, and consequently, he selected as a very appropriate instrument for that purpose, a carving knife from a foot to 18 inches long. As he commenced the assault, some person hallowed to Bat that he had a gun. Then the stalwart form of Masterson rose in its majesty. Fortunately, perhaps, Bat was unarmed. He seized the first opportunity and a chair and went for his assailant, knocking him down. It was well for the safety of the chair and Mr. Howard's head that some person intervened. The affair drew quite a crowd, and for a moment, considerable excitement. The finale was that Mr. Howard was arrested and brought before Esquire Cook, who gave him a good moral lesson and a fine of $25 in costs. Mr. Howard evinced considerable intelligence and claimed to be a lawyer as as well as a cook. But for the want of the requisite funds, Esquire Cook cooked the goose of the cook by sending him to the lockup to work out the fine. Bat Masterson's life had once again been saved through a timely warning. We can only speculate as to why the cook, Mr. Howard, sought to kill Bat. Howard may have considered Bat's political influence to be personally damaging. Perhaps he wanted to make a name for himself as the man who killed the famous gunfighter. Or maybe it was a private dispute that only the two of them knew about. Whatever the motivation may have been, Bat had survived two assassination attempts in Dodge City. If it were not for the young boy in 1879, or for the man in the saloon in 1884, Bat may not have survived into old age, but would have experienced the same fate as Wild Bill Hickok and Jesse James.